Today I'm going to talk to you about Mennonite traditions that my mom taught me. You know, my mom and dad left the Mennonite church, the plain church, before I was even born. But so much of their traditions they kept alive, and I'm going to share with you some of them. People have always been fascinated with the Amish and with the Mennonite life. I think because they see it as a quaint life, a life of peace and calm. While well, the Mennonites and the Amish aren't exempt from troubles in the world, it does seem like a quaint life. My mom taught me a lot of things about the Mennonite way, and I want to share with you some of the things that she taught me. Mennonites are known for being very frugal, most of them anyway. The old order Mennonites, the ones that I was around, now there are the modern Mennonites of today, which you really wouldn't be able to tell much difference other than maybe a small doily that they wear on their head. But my mom wore the cape dresses, my mom wore the bonnets, my mom was very plain, she grew up very plain, and these are the values she instilled in me. Whenever we would go to my grandma Brubaker's home, we always wore dresses, we always wore more plain type clothing. Because mother said it was always really important to respect those houses that we go to. And by respecting them, that meant dressing in a more modest fashion and dressing in dresses. At the time as a child, I really didn't understand mother's point of view. I couldn't understand why I had to take off the pants and wear the skirts when going to my grandma's house and my relatives. But looking back on it, I realized that my mother was trying to instill in me the value of respect and how we respect people. Some of my most vivid memories of my grandma was basically going to her house and playing at her house. My grandma was a very little lady. She was only 85 pounds and she was very short. There wasn't an ounce of fat on her body. She always was barefoot and always seemed to be working. My grandma, Brubaker, she was one that was the woman of Titus II. She got up early and worked into the evening. Everything was just perfect. Her home was perfect. It was very, very conservative. She didn't have anything fancy, but it was so clean. Then we have my grandma, Martin. She was also extremely plain, and she was a jolly soul. She always loved to laugh, and she was a larger woman having 16 children. What do you expect? They had two dresses, and after my mother passed away, we found these dresses, and nobody else wanted them, so I took them. And my granddaughter is showing you these dresses. So the black dress my mother wore when she went to funerals, because she always dressed in black at the funerals of our Mennonite ancestors, or our Mennonite relations. She always wore very plain dresses at funerals and weddings, at the plain places. A lot of times the funerals of my loved ones were funerals where it was at their home. And so we had the viewing at their home. They were oftentimes in the casket in the living room. I remember this with old generations and even young cousins. I've had some tragedy in my family on the Brubaker side. I've had cousins that died at age 16 when he fell into a manure pit. He was my cousin and I cannot ever forget his funeral. As the cars, the black bumper cars and the buggies lined up and we went through his home, there he was laying. I think it's beautiful to have a funeral at your home because that's where you lived and that's where you should be. In my grandma and grandpa Brubaker's, they always wore darker clothing, but when they died, they were all white. And I always thought about that and how their tradition was to wear white in the coffin. Their coffins weren't the kind of coffins that we would buy today. They were pine boxes. Yes, just like you see in Little House in the Prairie. My grandma and grandpa were buried in pine boxes. And that's how I want to be buried. So here is the dress that my mother made for when she would go to funerals. And here are the dresses my mother made when she went to weddings. But what else did my mother teach me? So much. See, I was the youngest child. I was adopted and I was like a sponge. I remembered everything. And I pretty much do most of what my mom does. 
as far as the Mennonite traditions of her life. You've seen me hang my wash out countless times on videos and people remark about how when they see me hanging the clothes on the line, it gives them a sense of peace and it brings back memories, <laughs> memories of when they were younger. These are things that my mom had taught me. My mom taught me to wash clothing and hang it on the line. Now, my mom had a dryer, but she rarely used it. She said hanging clothes on the line helps clothes last longer. Plus, it saves money on electricity. Now, my mom didn't really have to save that much money. They were very well off, but she did all these things because this is what she was taught. My mother was in a most amazing seamstress. In fact, I don't know anybody that could sew as good as my mom. My mom made quilts and sewed even though that's something I've never learned, I hold on to the things she made. Like this clothes bin bag, this was my mom's and I can't use it. <laughs> this is one thing I won't use because I don't want it to go away. I like it. I want to hold on to this memory. Mother always talked about having things and having things that were good quality, like these clothes pins. As simple as clothes pins, my mom said these were the kind you want to buy. You want to buy these kind. These were my mom's and I'm sure they're very old because she said the cheap ones with the springs give out, Tessie. You know, these. Even though these are what I buy because this is what I seem to be able to find, my mom's clothespins I don't use. This was a lesson for me because she said buy something but buy good quality and then it'll last you. My mom used to make dolls with these. We would paint faces on them and this was my toys. Yes, I played with clothespins. We pretended they were little boys and little girls and they were going to school. These are things that my mom taught me because this is what she learned. My mom grew up on a farm. They weren't that well off, but I think they were pretty satisfied in the way they lived. I don't think they needed much, but in those days, what did you really need? <laughs> it's not like today now, is it? Mother always talked about the practicalness of life and my mother was extremely practical even more so than my daddy. Isn't that how women usually are though? Women usually tend to be the practical ones. At least it's been that way in the people that I know. <laughs> Men tend to think a little more extravagant but you know there are some girls that are big spenders as well but my mother was the practical one and my mother would always keep my daddy grounded in ways that my dad didn't think very far ahead compared to my mom. My mom was articulate and she was extremely organized. That is the Mennonite way. That's not just the Mennonite way, that's the way people are in life in general. The Mennonite way is to be Titus II. So what is a Titus II woman? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Lots of times people say that things in the Bible, well, that's old school, that's way gone and done with. But I think there's so much of it that we're missing in the modern world that we're living in. I think that Titus II woman is a practical woman. It's a woman who works for a living. That doesn't mean she goes out and works in the public world, but she works hard. So many times they say homemakers have it easy. Homemakers don't really work. Well, yes, they do. Homemakers, can have a really hard job raising children, and especially if you're a homemaker that's very frugal. If you're a very frugal homemaker, that means you're usually not spending money for appliances or things that make life easier. A very frugal homemaker is oftentimes one who bakes bread by hand, one who does a lot of things by hand. Not necessarily, but typically you think of that. My mother taught me to waste not, want not. She didn't waste anything, and that's where some of this food that you come in hand it's because of some of the things my mother taught me. She taught me if something isn't nice in a piece of produce, you don't throw the whole thing away, you cut out the bad part. It was very thorough. In other words, when we would cook chicken or turkeys off the bone, she made sure she got every little speck of meat. I'm not so good at that, so my husband does it for me. And whenever he's taking the meat off the bone, it reminds me of my mom, because my mom was that way. My mother just would sit for hours and just make sure those bones were picked clean. <laughs> and that's something that her mother taught her. Her mother taught her to keep a house very clean and organized and neat. And not to throw things away, to keep things and reuse them. Now, my mother wasn't very sentimental, not like me, but you know, she did keep some things, the things that meant a lot to her, like the dresses she made for me and all of the things that you see I have in videos. 
those are certain things that she kept. She didn't just keep everything, but when she kept it, there was a reason for it. Reading the Bible was something very important to my mother. My mother would have devotions every morning. She would read the Bible and she would pray as well. I remember my mom and my dad praying every night before going to bed. They prayed for each other and prayed for the family. Prayer is something very important in the Mennonite home. And that's something that we should have in our homes as well. We don't have to be Mennonite to be able to acknowledge that we need prayer in our life. In my Mennonite, well, there's certain parts of me that are Mennonite. I do hold the traditions like my mom did, but I'm not all Mennonite. There's parts of me that are. I'm embracing all of the aspects of my life. You know, it's not just the Mennonite values they taught me. There was other values as well, values of the charismatic way. There was values that my parents have taught me about reading the Bible for yourself and studying it for yourself. Don't just go by what somebody says. Read it for yourself. My mom and dad told me a lot of things, and it's not just the Mennonite way, but yet the older I get, the more values of the Mennonite life I'm instilling. And that is the values of simple living, frugal living, and learning to do things the old ways. I love that. I love doing things the old ways. And as the years go by, even the Mennonites and the Amish are getting more modern, and soon the old ways will be long gone. Maybe they won't even be in the history books the way history seems to be these days. And I think that's very sad. So I'm gonna keep my traditions alive and keep the Mennonite way of living alive in small ways. And that in turn keeps my mom and my dad memories alive as well. Take care everyone. We'll see you guys tomorrow.